Hello, wonderful people. Demon Souls is on the horizon. We are all going to get our collective asses kicked. And to minimize your ass kickery, yours truly will offer valuable information to make your ass kicking a bit more bearable. It will be a refresher for people who already played the game and a time saver for those who didn't. This is the original Demon Souls. The creators have said that all weapons from the original Demon Souls will be back with an extra new weapon if you elect to buy the Deluxe Edition. Mm, extra money have to be made, eh? They also mentioned that all weapons will retain their movesets. So looking at the original Demon Souls is a close representation to what we are going to get with the remake. Anyways, let's get into the meat of this video. I present to you the very large swords. However, we will start small. We will cover the straight swords first, then the large swords, and then the very large swords. So we will cover three classes in this video. I will cover all the other classes in other videos, which will be all available before the PlayStation 5 is officially out in the EU region. So what the hell are you waiting for? Subscribe and don't be left behind. Straight Swords, your everyday spammer friend. If you ever want an easy ride and minimal activation of your brain cells, this is your class. The moveset is simple, elegant and fast. Almost all the moves inflict slash damage. You get one thrusting attack or piercing attack in this game with your heavy one-handed move. This class shines while one-handed with the exception of the heavy attacks while two-handed. All straight swords consume the same amount of stamina, this might change with the remake. They also all share the same moveset as well. There are 9 straight swords in Demon Souls. Let's start with the first 3, the short, long and night sword. They all have the same attributes while each is a straight upgrade from the one before it. Short sword being the weakest and the night sword being the strongest. They are all buffable with resins or spells. They are good for strength or quality builds and can be infused accordingly. In case you're not familiar with the terminology, quality build means you are leveling both stats, strength and dexterity. The infusion upgrade path enhances the scaling on both stats. The infusion is named quality, a term that everybody uses in the Soul series even though it's not called quality in any game but this one. These three swords cannot be infused with sharp, with sharp being the infusion that increases your scaling to dexterity. My advice? Never use the short sword, never. Pick either the long sword or the night sword, this of course depends on your preference. Let's move now to the fourth straight sword on this list, the broadsword. This weapon was a strength weapon throughout the Dark Souls series, here, it is the complete opposite. It's a dexterity weapon and is the only one that can be infused with sharp. But in return, it cannot be infused with the crushing path, the infusion that increases your strength scaling. It can also be infused with poison or bleed, the only straight sword that can do that in the entire game. So, this is for the most part a dexterity straight sword. So pick it up if you're a dex fact based build. The fifth straight sword is the Rune Sword, the same weapon wielded by Ostrava, our friendly YouTube neighbor. Oh, oh, I mean the NPC, you know, the one you keep saving from his ass getting kicked throughout the game. Yeah, that one. It's one of the better looking straight swords, but as we all learned while we are kids, don't judge a book by its cover. It increases your magic defense, alright, that's good. Oh, and it has strength and dexterity scaling, but you get almost zero damage from that, even at high level. That's so wonderful. It's basically a weapon that has no scaling, so you might use it if you plan to not level up your strength or dexterity. It almost exclusively deals magic damage. Furthermore, its upgrade material, the colorless demon soul, a resource that is stupendously rare. Like, rarer than rare. And did I mention that it's unbuffable? My advice? 
throw this weapon into the garbage as soon as you get it, unless they tweak it in the remake, that is. The number 6 straight sword is the penetrating sword. Very intimidating name, yet kinda sexy. It's another sword that is as hot as Gal, but from the inside is as yucky as Ellen, and believe me, I hate to say that because it's my favorite looking straight sword by far. It's a pure dexterity weapon, again upgraded with Carlilus Demon Soul, and astonishingly, it does less damage than the freaking short sword and the garbage rune sword. It supposedly has two selling points. First, it has the longest range in this weapon class. The range is substantial, and if you're good with positioning, it might be worth it. It has stronger piercing attacks, but the bonus can be overshadowed by higher attack rating the other swords provide. Thankfully, it's buffable, so you can try to work around its flaws, but the colorless demon souls that is required for this weapon makes it hard to justify it. Use it for fashion souls, that's your best bet. I hope they do buff it in the remake. The seventh straight sword is the Chris Blade. It's a unique weapon as it buffs your magic attacks by 30% while lowering your magic defense by 40%, a must have for magic users. It scales with magic but its primary purpose is to buff your spells. But you can use it to push back close enemies. The last two straight swords are the quote unquote broken sword and the blue blood sword. The broken sword's only purpose is to transform it into the blue blood sword as it is unupgradable as well. Remember that rule in the soul series where you shouldn't have a weapon that is clearly superior to all others? Well, this rule doesn't exist in this game as this sword proves. This is the only weapon in the game that scales with luck. Just like Anri's sword in Dark Souls 3, that was overpowered on release as well, but they nerfed it, unlike the Blue Blood Sword. It scales with strength a bit, and barely scales with both faith and magic, it also deals both physical and magic damage, or as the community calls it, split damage. The reason it's arguably the best high level weapon in the entire game is because it can be buffed with light weapons. It's one of the few weapons that can be buffed while having more than one damage type. Light weapon is a spell that adds magic damage to your weapon, and since this sword already has magic damage, the spell is amplified big time and the result is playing souls in easy mode. Oh, and the strength stat and the dex stat hard caps its scaling at 40, but luck stat doesn't, so the weapon scales all the way up to 99 luck. Moreover, once you transform it from the broken sword, it's already at its full potential as it doesn't need any upgrading. So all in all, this weapon is over freaking powered. One thing is, I love the lore behind it though, as the theme it portrays persisted throughout the whole series. The weak that face injustices from forces outside their hands will prevail in the end even if they are portrayed as inherently bad in history. The greatest strength comes from those who suffer the most. Now let's jump into the large swords, or as commonly known, great swords. This class has some of the best looking weapons in the game. If you like fashion souls, pick one of those baddies up. I personally prefer greatswords from the Dark Souls series as they have better variety in their movesets than here. All greatswords in Demon Souls share the same moveset, so picking one will be dependent on what you are going for with your build. The moveset is similar between one-handed and two-handed, the light attacks are the essence of this class, white swings that can hit multiple enemies at the same time. The heavy attacks are bland and boring, but they do serve a purpose. White swings won't work on narrow pathways, so the heavy attack will be handy in those cases. Great swords, in general, are light, easy to use, and will serve you in almost every part of the game. Like straight swords, there are 9 great swords in the game. However, one of them is a story weapon, so I won't mention it, so we are down to 8 great swords. The first two are the Bastard Sword and the Claymore. These two weapons are featured in every Souls game. 
both are for strength or quality builds. The Claymore is a straight upgrade of the Bastard Sword. It has better damage and range. Both weapons are buffable. For me, I'll go for the Claymore any day. The Bastard Sword has always been a black duck, no matter the game. The Claymore is one of those weapons that cater to many builds and playstyles. The third great sword is the Flamberg. Another great sword featured, yet again, in every Souls game. It's iconic for its bleed property, just FYI, bleed works differently in this game compared to other Souls games. It's not bad, but Poison and Plague are much better. The Flamberg is the last greatsword that can be infused on this list. It's the only greatsword that is dexterity oriented, and as such, it can be infused with Sharp unlike the last two greatswords. You can also infuse it with Bleed or Poison. The Tearing Infusion will increase its bleed damage even further, but if you really want to be creative, you can infuse it with Poison. The result? A weapon that can inflict both poison and bleed at the same time. This is kind of unique, even for the whole source, the soul series. And it seems to be a fun weapon to troll players with in PvP. The fourth great sword is the Moroyan Blade. This weapon was unique to this game until it was featured in Dark Souls 3, bearing the same name and function albeit much weaker in Dark Souls 3. The Moroyan Blade is not meant to be played or used as a main weapon. Its purpose is to increase all your damage output when your HP is low. The effect kicks in when you have 30% HP or less. It increases your damage output by a whopping 60%. Yeah, you heard that right. 60 freaking percent. It can be stacked with the Clever Rat's Ring which also increases your damage when at low HP. The outcome makes you evolve into a killing machine no matter your build. It's objectively super broken. There is even a term for this loadout, Hyper Mode. It's a glass cannon build where you obliterate everything in your way, but you do die easier. However, the dying easier part has workarounds. Let's hope they balance it in the remake. Next, we have the exemplary Large Sword of Moonlight, also widely known as the Moonlight Greatsword. I pay homage to this weapon every time I cover any of the Souls game. My persistent and irrational love for this sword is yes, abstract, but if only I have one in the real world. This is the OG of all OGs. This is the first Moonlight Greatsword in any Souls game, and what's really delightful is that this version is different from all the others. In every Souls game, the Moonlight Greatsword is a magic weapon, but here it's a faith weapon. The Moonlight Greatsword always emits beams of light in the series that gives a range option, but that is not here as well. Its uniqueness in this game is even more absurd, believe it or not. It flat out ignores shields. Yeah, you heard that right. You can't block any of its attacks, and if you try, you'll receive the full dose of damage. When you use this weapon in PvE, you won't even worry from blocking enemies. You'll never get deflected from someone blocking you, which basically makes some areas in the game act like a visit to Disneyland. It has S scaling in faith, so it caters to faith builds. Its damage is purely from magic. It weighs two units only, that's lighter than many straight swords. To top it all off, it can block 80% of magic damage, making it super unique in this regard, even in the whole soul series. Its downsides are that it cannot be buffed and is upgraded using the stupendously pain in the ass resource, Colorless Demon Souls. The last three great swords share the same concept, Demon Brand, Soul Brand, and Northern Regalia. These weapons don't scale with your stats, instead, they scale with your character tendency. Yeah, another complication over the world tendency. World tendency is confirmed to be back, by the way, so... Character tendency depends on your goodness or evilness meter. White is good, black bad. Demon brand scales with white, soul brand scales with black. All you need are the stat requirements for these weapons and you can allocate your other stats on other things. This is basically a workaround on investing in damaging stats 
which unsurprisingly unlocks super powerful builds that can make you super good with different styles while being at a low level. Demon Brand has an attack rating of 500 while pure white, Soul Brand 500 while pure black. The damage is both physical and magical. Split damage is not always good, but in this case, it's overpowered. Especially when you consider that backstabs and reposts ignore armor. If you use Demon Brand while pure black, your damage output will be zero. <laughs> it's pretty funny actually. As you can see, I do zero damage. NPCs won't even aggro when you attack them. Anyways, between the two, I recommend the Soul Brand. Especially if you are into PvP, since when you invade and kill a host of a world, your character tendency goes towards black, and in general, it's much easier to manipulate pure black character tendency, and it's much easier to accomplish. Now we elevate to even further absurdness. You can combine both swords to get the cute northern regalia, and when I say cute, I mean the meanest of the bunch. FYI, Combining two weapons was unique to this game until it made a comeback in Dark Souls 3. This is yet another rule breaker weapon just like the Blue Blood Sword. It scales either way, white or black. It has even more damage, 540, yeah, that is above and beyond what most weapons can reach with similar stat allocation. Even all weapons, no weapon can reach that damage with the same stat allocation. And to add to the BS meter, it even doesn't require any upgrade material. That is also true for Demon Brand and the Soul Brand. You can even elevate further into madness. Using Hyper Mode with the Northern Regalia is something to behold. The damage numbers are absolutely absurd. There are no weapons in the Soul series that can even come close to how much damage you can inflict with the Northern Regalia. Northern Regalia is the true unlock to Easy Mode. Blue Point Games, please balance this. Now, the last class in this video. The Very Large Swords, also widely known as Ultra Great Swords. This class reminds me of playing golf, but instead of balls, you swing at a fully armored humanoid. The pushback on this class is hilarious, yet so satisfying. Ultra Great Swords are top tier when it comes to versatility. The reason for that is the moveset which is satisfying as hell. You have way more options than the last two weapon classes. Light attacks and heavy attacks chain into each other. You have AoE attacks, meaning you can do a mini earthquake of damage around enemies. You also have hyper armored attacks. These are attacks that cannot be interrupted by enemy attacks. You force trades this way, which almost always turn into your favor. Attacks also catapult enemies all the way to the moon. This makes this class a good way for ledging enemies out of the map. The icing on the cake is that some of the attacks are unparryable. There are only two ultra great swords in Demon Souls. The Great Sword and the Dragon Bone Smasher. The Great Sword is one of my favorite weapons in the game. It's the only infusible ultra great sword, so you can make it for a strength or quality builds. Also, you can infuse other upgrade paths that result in really interesting builds. It's buffable, weighs only 10, with really high damage, and you can get it very early. What is not to like about this beast of a weapon? It's as versatile as it can get. Last weapon in this video is the Dragon Bone Smasher. The biggest weapon in terms of length in the whole game. If you are going for a strength build, this weapon will serve you even better than the Greatsword. It has more damage, more reach, and it increases your fire defense since this is the dragon slaying version weapon of Demon Souls. It's buffable, thus it's a perfect candidate to combine with the cursed weapon spell. The damage resulting from that spell is devastating. Even without it, you'll have pure physical damage hovering around 500 if you have good amount of strength. That makes it one of the heaviest hitting weapons in the game. It weighs 20 though, double the weight of Greatsword, so you will have to use the ring slot or sacrifice defense if you wish to retain fast rolls. It also requires colorless demon souls for upgrades and it cannot be infused with anything. The downsides of Ultra Great Swords is that they consume an insane amount of stamina, 
to the point that using the stamina ring is almost compulsory and they hit off walls quite often although I don't imagine the remake will have this problem but we have to wait and see hey you yeah you you know who you are the wonderful person if you enjoyed this video please hard mode repost the like button so help me out a lot join me next time as we explore magic overpowered magic in demon souls i will also be releasing a video or one video per freaking day until november the 19th so make sure to stick around thanks for watching